What's up guys, Skippy Africanus here, and in today's video we're going to be going over the Vaznev 9K from Modern Warfare 2, or as it's known in real life, the PP-19-01 Vityaz. Uh, we're just going to call it Vityaz for ease of discussion. Now I initially wanted to do this video after I did a video on another gun in this game, as this gun actually stems from the development of that other gun. However, as I'm currently making this video, I have another video set to release where I'm trying out a neat trick using a KP-9, a civilian model of Vityaz. Guys, and I feel like I should have this one released kind of close to the time I dropped that one. So in short, it's Vityaz Day, boys. So what is the Vityaz? Why does it exist? Who makes it? All these questions, let's get into it. Pretty much, it's like the KV Broadside we went over a few weeks back. Uh, it's basically an AK pattern rifle chambered in a different caliber, and much like the KV Broadside, it's not a 100% copy of your standard AK. This gun was developed at the request of Russian anti-terrorist forces who wanted something a little less powerful than the standard AKS-74U, and on top of that, something that would run a little better with suppressors, given the 74U's 545 caliber, Kinda has some, leaves some stuff to be desired, much like how 5.56 is with suppressors. So basically, they wanted a submachine gun. Now, as mentioned before, uh, this is not the first gun in line for this request. And the other one, in fact, uh, had a bunch of development put into it. Um, they were producing them in small batches and all that. The other one was pretty much good to go. The only downside was it still did suffer from reliability issues, which were mainly stemming from its magazine. It's really, really cool magazine. Uh, again, I don't want to really spoil what the gun I'm talking about is because that's for a future video, but just know it has a very, very cool magazine. Anyways, though, a few tweaks to that earlier platform, and really, I do mean a few, like, really not that many, um, landed us with the Vityaz, which, much like the earlier gun, it still used the AKS-74U receivers, as well as most of the parts. However, given the gun was chambered for the 9x19 cartridge, uh, the previous one I keep mentioning was not, uh, it was a different cartridge, but both cartridges was the same thing, but given, again, pistol cartridges, they were able to simplify it a lot more. Which I feel is best shown in the IRL cam, so, uh, let's head over to the IRL cam and uh, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we got the KP9 right here, the civilian owned version of the Vityaz, and then we have the standard AK rifle. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this AK right here, this is just a standard 47, you know, 762 caliber. This is not an AK-74, nor is it the AK-74U, which this is actually, you know, based mostly off of. However, mechanically, this gun right here is going to run exactly the same as the AK-74, AK-74SU, practically all AKs available, minus this one. So on the way your standard AK works is your bullet will be fired, and as it's traveling through and out the barrel, gas and all that is following behind it, and it actually gets funneled into this gas tube up here. The gas is then going to push against the end of this piston, and right up here, this bolt head is in this position right here, and it's locked into recesses in the receiver. So this whole assembly up top will go back while this will stay in place. And as this thing's going back, that is rotating, and then once gas pressures are in a safer range, it is fully unlocked, the bolt can go back, come forward again, turn and lock into those recesses, and you're ready to fire again. And that's pretty much how all AKs work. You need to have a system in place that keeps chamber pressure low before the bolt actually starts to move back, because if you simply had what we'll, what we'll discuss later as a straight blowback on a full-powered rifle cartridge, your bolt and basically whole gun in general would beat itself to death fairly quickly. However, the Vityaz is chambered in 9x19, which 9x19 doesn't isn't really as hard on the action as a full powered rifle cartridge like 545 by 39 762 by 39 stuff like that or at least on a lot of these larger guns if you have an a pistol you do need to have a locking system sometimes there's actually some exceptions but you usually have to have a locking system with 9 by 19 but in a big uh, platform like this, you don't really need it. And that's where we come into the main mechanical difference between the standard Vityaz and majority of the AK rifles. So on the Vityaz bolt, you'll notice that there is no rotating bolt head or anything. It simply relies on the mass of the bolt as well as some spring pressure. And doesn't actually need uh, you know, to wait for pressure to get to a safe level. The mass of the bolt, spring pressure, it's more than enough to keep the uh, gun from beating itself to death. Meaning that, you know, well, aside from not having the rotating bolt, they still have that piston, which helps in, you know, guiding the bolt itself and also adding mass to it. But the inside right here where you would have like your gas block that would funnel gas, you know, following behind the bullet, it, it doesn't exist. There's no, there's no funneling of gas through this thing. That's why you'll see that fairly large hole there. Now, before we get off the IRL cam, another difference that you very likely noticed is the magazine release. So on the standard AK, of course, it's the rock in, rock back method we all know and love. 
However, on the Vityaz, they decided to change it up a little bit, and instead, they actually added an insert, which they kind of had to do, because obviously the original wide magazine well wasn't going to accept a 9mm mag, but they added an insert, and rather than a rock back forward method, it's simply a push that lever in and pull it out method. Now, as previously mentioned, this gun was developed at the request of Russian Special Forces, and as such, sees some use by Russia. Pretty obvious, I would think, with an AK rifle. They, however, are not the only users, with Namibia and Uruguay also using them with their Marines for Nan Namibia and police for Uruguay. Of course, aside from these three countries, there's also a civilian market with Kalashnikov USA's KP-9, uh, then PSA has one, uh, I think there's one other, maybe Sentry has one. Now, when it comes to civilian market, and when it comes to 9mm AKs in general, Vityaz pattern guns are the most common, though they aren't super common. To be honest, while I've seen them at ranges, I've been the only person I can think of that's run one of the matches out of all I've done with the Vityaz. Uh, me and actually my brother just ran one today, but for the most part, yeah, I've, I've never seen anyone else actually run these at a match. I mean, maybe it's just my area where people aren't running these, but yeah, they don't seem to be really common at all. Uh, again, they are certainly the most common variant of a 9mm AK. Which I'll add is a shame given they run fairly well and of course they did do one thing right with these that nearly every PCC screws up on mag design. Loyal fans to both my YouTube and especially iFunny know that I have one massive pet peeve when it comes to PCCs, but I'm gonna say it here anyways because I cannot stress enough how much it annoys me. And that pet peeve is that there is zero reason why any PCC in existence should be using single feed magazines. Absolutely none. And that's one of my big reasons for really liking the KP9s um, is their use of a double feed magazine. They actually decided to not use the single feed magazine like you know, they shouldn't for a PCC, which was, again, it's very nice. Uh, there's no need for a mag loader. Everything just pops right in. As it should. And yeah, you know, it's just very nice that they actually uh, were smart with their mag selection. Like, this gun may not have the mag in the pistol grip like I feel PCC should, but to be fair, I'll give, you know, credit where it's due. It, the intent was to make a submachine gun that they could also produce fairly easily, and you don't want to redesign a whole new gun, so... There, you know, it, it's okay they didn't decide to put the mag in the right spot because they opted for the more cheap production route, which makes sense, the gun runs fine. So anyways, I think that is gonna do it for this short little video on the Vaznev 9K from Modern Warfare 2, or as it's known in real life, the PP-19-01 Vityaz. I hope y'all enjoy the video as much as I personally enjoyed making it, and like I had mentioned, uh, we will be having another video coming out this week uh, featuring the KP-9, that's the reason we're actually doing this gun aside from the one that I I kept mentioning earlier, so stay tuned for that one, and I will see y'all next time.